How you doing? This is Zach Allen. We are going to fix your shank once and for all. And if you don't have a shank right now, you know it comes about from time to time, right? Like that great uncle that comes to visit you that you can't wait to get out of your house. It visits everybody, especially if your handicap is between 10 to 15, 15 to 20, 20 to 25. You're going to go through a bout of the shanks. So I'm going to give you just a little insight as to why that could be happening. Heck, maybe your buddy's going through it and you can help fix him. It basically comes down to is it's a balance problem. And we have two forms of balance, right? We have static balance and we have dynamic balance. Static balance is your balance when you're not moving. Dynamic balance is your balance in motion. So some things to look for when you first experience those unmentionables, right? Is number one would just be, just make sure you're not setting up too close to the golf ball, right? That would be kind of the lowest hanging fruit. Usually that's not the case, right? Um, the next thing is people need to get a better sense, right? Your proprioceptions of exactly where their balance is at address. So you notice I've got an alignment. I've got a couple alignment rods here down at my feet. It'd be good take an alignment rod, run it underneath the middle of your feet. So you can kind of start to feel that balance go from toes to heels, toes to heels, right? I'm doing this a lot just for the camera emphasis, obviously just doing this much that makes a big difference in the golf swing. You only need to move the club about two thirds of an inch for it to be a hosel rocket, right? And that all that is, is this much in my balance, right? So when as I get set up, what I'm looking for is I'm looking for my upper, bo upper body to be neatly over my lower. So these are my balance points, right? The back of my right shoulder, front of my right knee, ball of my right foot. What happens to many people is they go to bend over to the ball their upper body starts to tip forward. And now that, that static balance at address has a toe bias. I use a pressure mat here a lot and I see it all too often. They just get used to it. Sometimes they can even hit the ball okay, but they're leaning in towards their toes already. So sometimes it's good to work on those proprioceptions, right? That's the feelings running up through your feet. Now I can feel I'm actually balanced at address. The next thing you'll check for, people get set, they get ready, and then just the very last movement before they go down to the ball is they still go in towards their toes. That is begging for a shank. If you're somebody that shanks, you get into ruts of shanks where you'll just start shanking the ball continuously, you've probably got multiple things happening contributing to a shank. So a, you know, two or three of these things. If you just shank it every once in a while, maybe you only have one of these. You need to kind of isolate and feel with some of this balance training, right? So at address, step one, I feel that just static balance. My upper body is stacked right on top of my lower body. Obviously I've bent from my hips, right? I've done all that, but I, I haven't done it in a way to where I'm starting to compromise some of these balance points. It's just, you know, I'm six one here, a little bit of knee bend. And then I don't even care where the ball is. Let my arms just hang. And now I'm starting from a great balance position at address. Okay. Now step two, as we go to make our golf swing, I see a lot of this it would be number two cause of a shank. I see the lead hip kind of move out and forward. And then once again, we go out towards our toes. That's definitely going to be begging for a shank. Um, you're noticing a theme here. It's weight on your toes is the big thing. That's why having these alignment rods towards your feet, that slight difference feeling, you'll be able to start to isolate that, 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 that problem of getting out on your toes at a dress, backswing, downswing, wherever it might be. So that would be number two is improper hip turn, right? They, they feel like they're doing this to turn their hips, but they're actually pushing their hips forward. And as they get to the top, oh my gosh, they're on their toes. Usually from here, it's, it's accompanied by some over the top move just because they're not in a, in a place to actually use the ground and start with their lower body, okay? So that'd be uh, the second kind of checkpoint, right? Is the backswing. What we're looking for when we get back to the top is I swing to the top and now my weight is kind of cross this alignment rod. It's on the toe of my left foot and it's a little more on the heel of my right foot. So I've turned correctly into my trail hip. I feel a little load in this glute and I can close my eyes here and I'm rotated, I'm turned. This is the dynamic balance, right? But I'm still balanced here, I can feel that. So it's good just to kind of get there. Okay, I feel it at address, boom, to the top, stop. I feel the rotation in my body, 
but I still feel totally balanced, ready to come down and unwind, then you know you're good at that, okay? Now the last one, this is probably the most common one that causes the shanks. You get to the top, right? Your setup was good, top was good. Now as we start down, we start to go in towards the ball, right? Our pelvis starts to thrust in towards the golf ball, and now we get up on both toes and we start doing what I call the Elvis, right? We get a little bit like this, and that's all it takes to move the club into the hosel, right? And it's so easy to do because the club, it literally is trying to pull us that way. It's done two different ways. Sometimes people, they come over the top and they're on their toes, right? And then you can see from here, the club is outside the ball. I'm gonna hit the hosel, right? Or they come from way underneath, but the same thing, I'm moving out towards my toes. Okay, so what I would have you do is, boom, I feel it good at address, I'm balanced to the top, now halfway down. I feel like I transitioned, I started down with my lower body a little bit, but boy, I feel balanced like a, like a linebacker here, ready to take a, take a hit. Straight down, everything is balanced right through the middle of my feet. I'm not on my toes, I'm not on my heels. So I'm in a really good place from there to this position where I'm not gonna shank the ball. I'm not out here over the top on my toes. I'm not underneath and on my toes. And lastly, it's the final one to make sure you don't ever shank it is what happens at impact, okay? As that club, right, we came down, we did all those other ones good. Now as we start getting into impact, it's very important that our lead hip and our lead foot be pushing, watch when I come down. You see, my, you see the air under my lead foot? I'm pushing back in a way to where I'm creating space in, in this direction with my lead hip, right? So sometimes people get all the way to here, they do it good, and then just at the very bottom, they still move their hips in a way where their pelvis goes into the ball, and it introduces the hosel into, the, into their still. So that last bit is from here, practice pushing back. So I'm actually taking my foot, I'm pushing it against the ground in this direction to push my lead hip back that way, All right? So if there was something back here, a little wall or resistance, I'm pushing it back this way. That would be the final one, All right? And these all happen obviously very quickly in the swing, but from this position, I wanna be creating space with my lead hip. This would be what I see a lot of golfers do. So they still can shank it from time to time. But go ahead and check those things out, right? And, and at worst case, just watching me run through those things, you might feel, oh, you know what? That's my setup, I think I do that. I think I lean in right before I take the club back. Or you know what, that's my backswing. I go out towards my toes. Whatever it might be, it's gonna cause some big contact issues, all right? So go work on your static balance at address, work on your dynamic balance. It's a great way to get better. You don't even have to necessarily be at a driving range, right? You can just be standing in the comfort of your own home, alignment rods under your feet. There's my setup position, and you should just be able to very quickly just walk right into it and find it, right? Find balance. Go to the top, find balance. Load it into this glute, rotate it into my, my trail heel, balance at the top. Transition, balanced. Impact, balanced. I feel a little stretch on my left, my left glute right here as I'm pushing back. This left hamstring is a little bit stretched out, right? Compared to like this, I'm not feeling anything there. So you feel the right muscles, right? Good golfers, they feel balanced and they're using the right muscles in order to hit good golf shots. So I hope that takes a little bit of the mystery. You haven't been cursed by the shank gods if you start shanking. You're just getting into one of these areas that can get dangerous, all right? I hope that helps you out and kiss those shanks goodbye. Thanks for watching. When it comes to the golf swing, I've seen and tried it all, but nothing has proven as effective as the concept that I'm about to share with you now. It is the single most powerful piece of golfing advice I have ever come across. In fact, I would go as far as to call it a magic move. Since I don't have time in this short video, I've put together a three-part web class where I teach you exactly how to put it to use in your game. Nothing held back. I call it my magic move training series and you can get the entire thing free of charge by clicking the link right here. These videos aren't available anywhere else, so go ahead, click the link right now, and I'll send you the first lesson right away.